Well, he settled for Guinea Fowl Rarin the minute he stepped out of the then Tamale Polytechnic, now the Tamale Technical University. And that's a rare story of most first graduates. Jonathan Akbalu, a.k.a. Joe, told Joy Business on his farm in Tamale it was the nostalgia from his farm, his father's farm, that inspired him to take up the venture, only to find out that there is more in store for him in the poultry business. Here's more on his story. Guinea fowl meat is a delicacy in Ghana. Sadly for patrons, it is expensive and hard to come by. Unsuspecting clients are sometimes shortchanged as some popular sale joints and eateries. They are sold dressed chicken instead of guinea fowl meat. With his knowledge and his little experience on his father's vegetable farm, Joe abandoned the luxury life offered him in his plush family home in Accra and set out to make a living for himself up north. This was in 2008. 13 years down the line, I visited Joe on his farm. It's been exciting over the years. It was a bad news from the beginning. Um, but I thank God for adventurous nature of life. Because the very first bed we did in 2009, our largest production was 600 beds. Okay. We lost them all in one week. Poultry farming is now an elementary task for Joe. The depth of knowledge he has is saving his colleague farmers a great deal in their poultry business. Another opportunity to make ends meet via consultancy services. When your best died and then um, you accidentally cause death and you call it mortality, I wouldn't agree with you. Okay. When bears die of a disease you are not aware of or it came out of a transfer from another place, then we can be struggling with mortality. Okay. But if maybe you didn't give the nutritious food, you didn't control the microclimate for them, uh, macro and micro for them, and then the bears are dying, mm. you can't call that mortality. Many farmers say, my bears have died. Mm. Then I tell them, you kill the bears. Then they say, no. <laughs> Then I start the question. By the time we get to halfway, they agree, yes. <laughs> I, killed I killed them, them but <laughs> I didn't intentionally kill them. While providing the consultancy, Joe identified yet another opportunity, a great need among his colleague farmers. <laughs> Incubators for hatchery. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just level one of the nets. With his engineering background, Joe personally manufactures incubators of various sizes to assist poultry farmers near and far to incubate their eggs to hatch. He currently operates one of the famous hatcheries in Tamale to support various farmers in the industry. A machine like that is strictly for hatching. Mm. So the chicks that we are seeing down is because they are in small numbers. This one holds about 1,600. So this is quite a small number. Oh, okay. That's why we actually have it this way. Okay. Having harnessed these opportunities in the poultry industry, could there be any threat to owning and maintaining a viable poultry farm in Dungu and its environs? Poultry industry, more specifically guinea fowl, it's um, profitable. The only problem we have is we don't have control over the, um, uh, the food stuff mm. or the ingredients, mm. mainly maize, soya, probably fish. And so at any given time, the price could swell as we saw um, later parts in uh, November, December, where prices just went so high and has affected the pottery industry. For now, the future looks bright for Joe and his goalie farmers up north who are into poultry business. Their major challenge, however, is the availability of land and capital to expand. 